Have you ever wondered how your body forms urine? It's a fascinating process that plays a crucial role in maintaining our body's internal balance. Today, we're going to delve into the intricate mechanisms at work within the kidney, from filtration to reabsorption and everything in between. We'll explore how our kidneys transform blood into urine, all the while keeping our systems in check. So without further ado, join me as we uncover the secrets of urine formation and its vital role in maintaining overall health. To understand urine formation, we first need to delve into the anatomy of the kidney. Imagine the kidney as a dynamic factory, with millions of tiny units known as nephrons. Each nephron is a miniature filtration system, equipped with a unique structure called the glomerulus. Picture the glomerulus as a sieve, sifting through the blood that flows through it. As it does so, it filters out water and salutes, which then enter another part of the nephron known as the renal tubule. This filtration process is a bit like making coffee, where the water passes through the coffee grounds, extracting the flavors to form the beverage. In this case, the beverage is the initial filtrate, which forms the basis of urine. This filtration marks the first step in the intricate process of urine formation. So the next time you enjoy a cup of coffee, remember the amazing work being done by your kidneys. After filtration, the next step in urine formation is tubular reabsorption. Now imagine the filtrate, a mix of water and solutes, journeying through the winding path of the renal tubule. As it travels, a fascinating process takes place. Essential substances such as glucose, amino acids, and electrolytes are selectively reclaimed and returned to the bloodstream. Why is this so important, you ask? Well, these substances are nutrients that the body needs to function effectively. Glucose provides energy, amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and electrolytes maintain the balance of fluids in our body. Losing these vital substances in urine would be akin to throwing out the baby with the bathwater. But how does this reabsorption process work? It's all thanks to the cells lining the renal tubule. These cells have transport proteins embedded in their membranes, and they work like diligent gatekeepers, allowing essential substances to pass back into the blood while keeping unwanted waste in the tubule. It's a bit like a quality control check, ensuring that only the waste products and excess substances continue their journey down the tubule. Everything that the body needs is quickly returned to the bloodstream, ready to be used again. And so, through reabsorption, the body ensures that essential nutrients are retained while excess waste is prepared for elimination. It's a marvel of biological efficiency, showing us once more just how wonderfully our bodies are designed to maintain balance and health. Another key aspect of urine formation is tubular secretion. This is a complex yet fascinating process that plays a critical role in our body's intricate balancing act. So what exactly is tubular secretion? Well, it's the active transport of certain substances from the bloodstream into the renal tubule. During this process, the body selectively secretes substances such as hydrogen ions and potassium ions. You might wonder why these specific ions? Well, hydrogen ions play a crucial role in maintaining the body's pH balance. Too many hydrogen ions can make the body's fluids too acidic, while too few can make them too alkaline. By secreting the right amount of hydrogen ions, the body ensures that the pH remains within a healthy range. On the other hand, Potassium ions are essential for nerve and muscle cell functioning and maintaining fluid balance. However, too much potassium can be harmful. Hence, the body uses tubular secretion to regulate potassium levels in the blood. But it's not just about hydrogen and potassium ions. Tubular secretion also eliminates certain waste products and drugs from the body, further contributing to the detoxification process. So you see, tubular secretion is not just a minor detail in the process of urine formation. It's a vital mechanism that helps maintain the delicate balance of our internal environment. Tubular secretion helps to maintain our body's homeostasis, ensuring that our systems function optimally. Now, let's delve into the kidney's role in regulating urine volume and composition through concentration and dilution. The kidneys, with their intricate network of nephrons and specialized cells within the renal tubules, are master regulators of urine concentration. They do this in a bid to maintain the overall fluid balance within our bodies. Imagine this. You've just chugged a large bottle of water. Your body now has an excess of water, and it needs to get rid of it. 
This is where the kidneys step in. They dilute the urine, allowing for more water to be excreted, thereby ensuring that the body doesn't retain too much water. Conversely, let's consider a scenario where you're out hiking on a hot day and you haven't had water in a while. Your body is dehydrated and it needs to conserve as much water as it can. Again, your kidneys come to the rescue. They concentrate the urine, minimizing the amount of water that is excreted and helping your body retain as much water as possible. This continuous adjustment of urine concentration by the kidneys, either by dilution or concentration, is a vital process that helps to maintain the delicate fluid balance within our bodies. It's a fascinating dance of biology, ensuring that we stay hydrated when necessary, while also preventing water overload. Through concentration and dilution, the kidneys play a crucial role in maintaining our body's fluid balance. Hormonal regulation plays a critical role in urine formation. This intricate ballet of biochemistry is predominantly orchestrated by two key hormones, antidiuretic hormone or ADH and aldosterone. Now imagine the kidney as a bustling city with ADH as the city planner. When the body is dehydrated, ADH is released, signaling the kidney to conserve water. It does this by increasing the permeability of the kidney's collecting ducts, allowing more water to be reabsorbed into the bloodstream and less to be excreted as urine. The result? A smaller volume of more concentrated urine. On the other hand, we have aldosterone, the gatekeeper of electrolytes. Aldosterone controls the balance of sodium and potassium in our bodies by regulating their reabsorption in the kidney. When aldosterone levels rise, more sodium is reabsorbed into the bloodstream, and more potassium is excreted in the urine. This sodium reabsorption also encourages water to follow suit, helping to increase blood volume and pressure. In essence, these hormones work in a finely tuned partnership, each playing their part in the grand performance of urine formation. They adjust the volume and composition of our urine in response to the ever-changing needs of our bodies. Through hormonal regulation, our body fine-tunes urine output and ensures the maintenance of our blood pressure and electrolyte balance. We've covered a lot of ground in our exploration of urine formation. We've journeyed from the intricate anatomy of the kidney through the stages of filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. We've examined how the kidney regulates concentration and dilution and how hormones like ADH and aldosterone play a crucial role. All of these complex mechanisms work together to produce urine, a key player in maintaining our body's balance. We hope you now have a deeper appreciation for the intricate process of urine formation in the kidney, a marvel of biological engineering.